joining me right now is Bantamweight standout Taylor Moore. Taylor, I really appreciate the time, man. You don't got much many days before you get in and step into that cage again. How you feeling? Feeling good. Uh, my weight's low. I've got a low, I've got a small weight cut, which I'm not really used to. Usually, I'm cutting ten to fifteen pounds, and I'm not I'm nowhere near that right now. So it'll be a nice it'll be a nice trip. I'm not gonna have to worry about starving myself and all that. I get to go to Vegas, relax a little bit, get some light training in, and not have to kill myself. So I'm happy about that. I'm excited for the opportunity for sure. Why have you been so low with your weight this camp? Have you made some adjustments? Yeah, I made some adjustments before uh, when all this COVID stuff was going on. I was kind of like, uh, I was in the gym kind of like three days a week or so because uh, the gym kind of slowed down during all of it. And then uh, we started this new program, the elite program at our gym. And uh, it's a mandatory five days. So I've been in there every day just about training. And I just feel like my weights just shed off a lot easier. Like I've been able to eat whatever I want. I haven't had to like, you know, put myself in a calorie deficit or anything like that so I feel like my weight's just shedding off naturally just from training so much more than I was before so I think I think that's the main reason why do you think being able to eat what you want during camp mentally it it helps you more yeah I think it helps me more I mean I feel like when I'm always eating like 100% clean like when I'm doing that like because most of the time I got 10 15 pounds to cut so I feel like uh mentally like when I'm like oh I I can't eat this I just need to eat chicken or I just need to eat like real clean I feel like my body is not used to that like Mm -hmm. I have a very high metabolism so when I eat real light my weight comes down real fast but at the same time I feel kind of weak like I don't feel like myself but now I've been able to eat basically as many calories as I want and I haven't really had to you know, be like, oh crap, I'm gonna have to go run extra or do extra training to get that couple extra pounds. Like, it's nice not having that stress. All right. Well, you know, you've been a, a lifelong athlete. I, I believe you started wrestling at like nine or 10 years old, you know, and then yeah. you, you transitioned over to MMA. You're representing Scorpion Fighting System. How did you end up there? I ended up there by uh, right when I got done with high school uh, wrestling. I, uh, I had a good job to where I was making more than what I was going to make at the job that I was going to be going to college for. So I kind of chose against going and doing college wrestling. And, uh, but I still like really had the urge to compete in something, but it had to be a combat sport. Like it couldn't be, it had to be a combat sport. So, uh, one of my buddies introduced me, uh, to my coach and, uh, I started doing jujitsu with, with having a wrestling background to help me a little bit. So I already had that competitive side to me. And, uh, once I started doing jujitsu, I just got hooked. And then, uh, and then I started doing boxing, kickboxing, and then I just mixed it all together. And that was it. You have a lot of guys coming out of that, that gym, man. Um, especially on the contender series with Josh Parisian and and Cody Brundage and, and the other guys slipped in my mind. England. Kyle and yeah, Kyle Anglin. You know, it's just what are you guys doing over there? You guys are just producing guys left and right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's just the energy in our team. We got, uh, we have a really good coaching staff. Like it's hard for me to put into words on how good uh, our coaching staff is. They're always really good at uh, keeping everybody motivated, keeping everybody's energy up, positivity and stuff like that. It's nice having that morale around the gym. You know, especially when you got Parisian coming, like he came from pretty much nothing, you know, so like he to see him come up, make it to the UFC, it's inspiring. And then when you see people do that, you're like, well, why can't I do that? And then it just pushes you. We all push each other. We all uh, hype each other up. And it just it's really good energy in the gym. And I definitely feel like uh, I feel like that's a big part of it. You got 10 wins, 70 percent finishing rate. Do you think killer instinct is something that you develop over time or is it something that's inside you inside of a fighter i feel like you either have it or you don't i i'm not saying you can't develop it over time i feel like that's definitely possible but i feel like you kind of know when you start like because i was kind of an aggressive kid growing up too like my grandma still tells me stories all the time like all you wanted to do when you were younger was fight me i'd ask you what you want to do i want to fight 
Like that's all she talks about. So it's, it's funny knowing that I was like that from the get go. And I feel like I was just kind of born with it. And now I'm just rolling with it. I mean, I love doing it. I get to pay to, I get paid to do it mm -hmm. and I just enjoy doing it. So why not? Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, you've had some incredible wins and I was looking at, you know, your resume and in 2017, 2018, you, you suffered back-to-back -back losses. Talk about yep. digging yourself out of that slump because I feel like that is so important for a fighter, especially a fighter that's heading into the UFC at the highest level. Yeah. Um, I One thing I'll say is I feel like dealing with losses like that and going through points like that in your career is something that every fighter should have to go through to make it to the top. I feel like if you're getting into the UFC undefeated – or with like a perfect record, I feel like you might not have fought the right competition yet. Mm -hmm. And um, like me, I, I'm 10 and four. I don't have a perfect record, but I know that I've taken tough fights. Mm -hmm. And so like, I feel like that mentally prepares me. Like, cause I feel like if I haven't fought anybody, I'm going to be worried going in the cage. Like, well, I haven't really fought anybody. What, how good is this guy going to be? Like, I don't like having those worries. So to me, like I had a long amateur career. I went 16 and one as an amateur. I held six titles, like, but I fought everybody that I could, like every guy that was good in Michigan. Like I tried to fight them and I feel like taking those tough fights, taking losses, you know, having those five round wars that prepares you for, for tough grueling fights. And I just feel like, um, going down, I lost, uh, I lost a Mandel, a, a decision, a five round decision, and then I lost, um, I th it was a unanimous or a split out in China for uh, Kunlun fight. Another really good experience of mine. Um, but after that, I kind of realized that like I either need to put my put my all in it or not do it. And But I feel like I kind of went through a little period in my career where I got burnt out a little bit. I kind of was not not wanting to train hundred percent. I was having little injuries and, and stuff like that. That was kind of keeping me off the mats and, but I still wanted to fight. So like, I feel like maybe I, uh, maybe rushed into one of them, the, the, um, the China fight, there was a few factors that played in that one. Like I didn't get half my stuff that, that like half my luggage until like the day before the fight. So I like didn't have half my food that I was, was going to bring. And honestly, I wasn't a big fan of the food out there. Yeah. So like, I don't know. There, there's little factors that play in it. There's no excuses, but um, I feel like I just went through a little slump and then taking those two losses, I was like, you know what? If I lose another one, I mean, I don't know how I'm going to come back from that. So just racked up a few more wins and then now I'm here. Three solid wins. I, I beat um, Eric Ramirez. He was three or four and one when I beat him. Uh, Ventimiglia, I won the title from. And then uh, my most recent fight was against Josh Robinson, who's fought basically everybody around. I mean, he's fought Bedford, he's fought UFC vets, and that was another good win for me. And I feel like those three wins kind of pushed me up a little bit, taking a few tough fights and getting quality wins, not just wins. Flying across the world and, and going into inner China and fighting, I've interview so many fighters it's countless fighters that have done that and that's a different experience man you ain't you nobody's it's so hard to explain that and i, I understand what you're saying getting your luggage lost and that's just yeah, a normal it, thing over there it wasn't even so much the luggage thing a lot of it was uh i flew out like three days three or four days before the fight and it's mm -hmm. like i don't know exactly the time change from china to uh where i live i want to say it's like 12 or 16 hours or something crazy mm. like that but i had a hard time sleeping for days mm. and it's like I, I wasn't sleeping i hardly had an appetite like the whole time change screwed me up and then uh another really weird thing is that the fight was outside <laughs> and uh it was like 33 degrees when we fought and it, there was like a breeze and everything like you're sweating but you're freezing at the same time it was just super weird Super weird fight, but at the same time, like, I wouldn't take it back. There's not really mm -hmm. a whole lot of people that can say that they flew across the world mm -hmm. to fight, you know? So it's like, that's that's one I'll never forget for sure. Yeah, you could get through that. You could get through anything. Yeah, and a cool fun fact, uh, the current 
strawweight champion uh, Wei Li fought, I think, the fight after me okay. out there on that card before she got signed to the UFC. Yeah, it's incredible, man. And, uh, yeah, after that, you you did string up uh, three straight good performances against good competition. But it wasn't yeah. easy. You know, last year was nah. it was kind of rough. You know, you had a bunch of fights canceled. And even that Robinson fight, you, you went in there injured, I believe. What what, what was going on? Uh, what happened was uh, I suffered. I had a fight for Legacy uh, scheduled for LFA. And... Uh, I got, I had a, I kind of had a small injury in my shoulder before that. And, uh, I babied it, I babied it. And then like a week before the fight, I landed on it wrong in practice, completely screwed it up. Um, I had to pull out of the fight. I mean, I could hardly lift my sh arm like this. So I had to pull out of the fight. The guy that I was supposed to fight got knocked out in like 12 seconds by the replacement. Uh, and then, I thought I, I gave it like two full months to heal because I was like really trying to avoid surgery. I, I gave up two full months uh, and then I got a Bellator offer. Like I was feeling healthy, everything like that. I go out to Chicago to fight for Bellator. My opponent came in six pounds heavy. Mm. So fight got scrapped. And then uh, I think I think that was it. And I, well, I had my I had my surgery. And then, obviously, I needed my recovery time. I haven't fought since my surgery, but the Robinson fight, I, I had, I thought I was perfectly good to go. Like I, I was, I trained the whole entire training camp, no issues with my shoulder. I got in there in the first round. Uh, we got in like one big exchange, and boom, I felt it instantly, like just shot right down my arm. And uh, after the first round, I got on the stool and I was like, dude, my, my arm is trashed. Like, my shoulder's trashed. He's like, oh, you got to deal with it for 10 more minutes. I ended up winning the fight. And, uh, yeah, I knew, I knew I needed surgery. I went and got an MRI. They told me I tore a pretty serious ligament, got the surgery, and honestly haven't had any issues with it since. So, I mean, it was a three, three-and-a-half-month recovery, but – it's something that needed to be done, or I don't think it would have ever got fixed right. So, well, the pandemic hit after that, and I guess it gave you more time to let your shoulder get fully healed. You know, sometimes three months is a is a long time, but I think like you need that little extra time, and it kind of it was a yeah. blessing in ways. Do you think? Yeah, I think so. I feel like because me, I'm really stubborn. Like I don't, mm. I don't let pain keep me out of too much. Like I, I kind of just I try and you know turn my head to it a little bit and uh i try not to complain about stuff like that but at the same time it was a pretty serious injury and i knew that if i didn't take care of it it was going to shorten my career so i really wanted to just take care of it and i feel like that extra time helped me out because then when i came back i even felt better and i was able to like slowly get back into things and i feel like maybe if that didn't happen i might have tried rushing into it a little bit and, you know, who knows, I could have re-injured myself and then back to square one. So I feel like it might have it might have been a good, good thing. All those ups and downs, man, lead to November 10th, Contender Series. It's a long time coming. Danny yeah. Sabatello, I, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Thoughts on him so. and his style? Um, I think he's a, I think he's a solid wrestler. Uh, I know he's a D1 college wrestler. Um, I give him props on that. Uh, I feel like he's not as experienced in the sport. Um, I feel like he, he definitely has not been doing jujitsu as long as me. He definitely has not been striking as long as me. Um, and I know he's a great wrestler. That's usually what he uses in his fights. Uh, but we're not doing a wrestling match. There's knees involved. There's plenty of other factors in it. There's submissions involved. And I really do don't think he's fought the best competition. Uh, I, I mean, he's he's very solid, but I don't think he's he's fought like maybe one or two guys with a winning record. Uh, one of them he lost to, and uh, I expect a tough fight. I mean, it's always hard sitting there defending takedowns and mixing it with the striking and whatnot. But I definitely feel like I have tools to uh, really hurt him and catch him and some stuff. So. I, I'm expecting a good fight. I'm hoping that he comes out to fight and impress Dana, not so much 
much just try and push me against the cage and stuff like that. Cause you know, that's not going to do anything for either of us. You know, that I know what they want to see. They want to see us go out there and fight and that's what I'm there to do. So I'm going to do my best to do that. I mean, if he's constantly shooting, I just got to do my best stuff, the shots, keep it on the feet. Or if he does get takedown, just be very active on my back. Just show him my jujitsu and just show him that's not just a wrestling match. Take him into deep waters is the, is the game plan. Has, has training been normal for you? Has, has there been restrictions still implemented in, in your state? Uh, no, training hasn't been, uh, limited to me. Uh, our gym's been, I think our gym closed for like three weeks, a month, maybe, uh, when the whole pandemic hit and then my coach kind of was in a position where if he didn't open back up, we weren't going to have a gym to come back to. So he decided to go against our state's, uh, orders just opened up the, uh, all the police around us weren't enforcing it. Mm -hmm. So we just opened back up and just went right back to normal and honestly i mean i think we've had one kid in the last six months test positive for covid we have 80 to 100 people in the gym like every day and you know nobody's getting sick everybody's healthy so it's like obviously you gotta take it serious but at the same time we're all healthy we take care of ourselves and we're cautious about it so things have been good that's the key man you know be cautious that's it you know you can't f yeah the people out there not believing it that's the one that blows my mind yeah i mean you gotta believe in it it's real but at the same time i don't think it i don't think it's as deadly it mm. is um they portrayed it to be uh i mean yeah you gotta wear your mask when you go inside you know places and stuff like that but at the same time you have to you have to let your immune system do what it does you can't lock yourself in your house you know and not let yourself be around germs because then you're not going to have an immune system. Then you are going to get sick when you get exposed to it. So it's like if you stay healthy, you know, be cautious about it. And I, I don't really feel like you'll have any issues with it. How do you see yourself winning this fight and, and getting that contract? I think uh, I think that I'm going to be able to stuff his takedowns. And I feel like worse comes to worse. If he does get on top, I feel like my jiu-jitsu is on a different level. I feel like I have... Uh, a few submissions that he would fall for being a, a solid wrestler. I've noticed a few things in his game uh, that he gives up and kind of falls into moves that I like to do. Um, and I don't really feel like he's very comfortable on the feet. I don't, I'm not really sure how he's going to come out to this fight. Uh, but judging on his nine that he's had, he fights very similar every fight. I know that he's been more active than me. I had my surgery, and then I haven't been able to get any fights around here because there's never there hasn't been any cards near me. But I know he's had two fights in 2020. He's a little more active, but based off his most recent fights, he fights very similar. So it's like I have an idea of what he's going to do. I feel like uh, my job's just going to have to be stuffing his shots, beat him up on the feet, put him uh, – putting him in uncomfortable spots to where he hasn't really had to deal with before. He's used to being on top, dominating, and I feel like once he gets in a bad spot and he's not that he's not used to, I feel like um, he, he might break. And uh, if not, I feel like I definitely have the tools to finish him on the feet or on the ground. Uh, one last thing, you know, there's many different types of competitors in this sport. The two biggest categories would be martial artist or prize mm -hmm. fighter. Where do you feel like you yeah. fit in most? Um, I don't really know. I uh, I really like to put on exciting fights. I mean, I have my fights where I'm, you know, trying to Khabib them, take them down, control their wrist, beat them up, mentally break them, and then get like a late finish. And then I have my fights where I come out just trying to knock them out. Mm -hmm. It really depends on the opponent and how I'm feeling. Um. I don't really know. I I mean, I always look for a finish, obviously, but at the same time, I I try and play things to my advantage. If if I know somebody has a superior advantage on me, I'm not gonna let my ego get in the way and try and you know win by any certain way or anything like that. Um, but I definitely feel like I put on exciting fights, and I feel like that uh, I do have what the UFC is looking for. And uh, so now it's just my job to show that on November 10th. All right. Like you said, November 10th, Dana White's Contender Series, UFC Apex. 
It's going to be an exciting one. Thank you, Taylor, for the time, man. And uh, good luck and all the best. And, and we'll see you on TV. All right. Thank you. And thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It was good talking to you.